the reason why Helvetica is, is, uh, is now the World Type Fest is um, because Steve Jobs uh, was in his garage, invented the Macintosh, and talked to Adobe about the, first, the list of the fir 13 first fonts, as you may remember some of you, the 13, Korea, Zapf, Chancery, Palatino, etc. The weirdest choice ever. Turns out he had a specimen book from neither type there. And Steve Jobs knows about as much as type as I know about Alphornblasen. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, so, you know, he just picked whatever, you know, the first one, uh, Aachen Boat or something, and the last one, Zapf, and then a few things in the middle that kind of looked okay to him. No, seriously, that is actually history. And I think it was lucky to be in there because it looks sort of like, you know, it can't do any harm, it, it won't bite anybody. It's an old kind of thingy. It's a cool name, but, you know, Steve Jobs can remember it. <laughs> and then, of course, the worst thing that ever happened to America is that uh, Microsoft, who are a horrible company and mean and have no taste, went and, they went and cloned it. They called it Aria, so it would come up in the menu at the top. But they called it Zaria, and nobody would use it. You know, it's all the way up. Uh, very clever, obviously. Everything in the middle, which is bad enough. Accidents, but it's also up there, by the way. Um, and they called it Aria, and of course, every clone is worse. I mean, you know, Aria is a horrible copy that could repeat all the things that are wrong with uh, with Helvetica and add some more. <laughs> Trying to make it different. It's a really horrible, dis despicable typeface. It, it sets badly, it looks shit in small size, any large, even worse than large sizes. And it has become uh, the world dominating typeface. And unfortunately, Helvetica gets a bad name through Ariel. So we really have to separate. Most people, when they think they talk about Helvetica, they mean Ariel because that's what on Microsoft you have. And Microsoft, as you know, is you know, world dominance, 95% uh, of everything that your mother and, and oh, I mean, maybe not your mother, no, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your mother's, <laughs> older people than, than me even, uh, what they would use. And, uh, and it's become that, as David said, that attitude, oh no, it's a default, uh, let's just use it. But as David also says, you know, you cannot not communicate. But it's like first action of communication. Uh, if you, there's, so there's the people who use it because it's there, you know, it's like air, I mean, you have no choice but breathing in, even though it's bad sometimes, you can't stop breathing, well you can, but then you die. So Helvetica is like air, you know, it's out there and you have to use it. Uh, and then there are people who use it consciously. And we have it in the movie, as you'll see, people like Wim Crowell thought Helvetica would save his life, he would have to start, uh, have to stop thinking almost, because he would only just, you know, Helvetica would fall down and everything he would design would be in Helvetica, he would never have to think about typing anymore. And that's the sort of intellectual laziness that uh, maybe we don't want uh, a default that would always work, because then it stops working. And there was a naive idea, this is the mid-60s, when it arrived in Holland, for example, that um, we could have neutral objective design. But neutral objective design is like Sozial you know, social housing, which is not good or bad. I mean, it means it's dry inside, but that's what it means. There's no taste, there's no culture. <laughs>